Good morning all. Do you know what these are? They're connectors. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. Here are the sockets, the pins, I suppose you could call them, although they're receptacles. And there's also, not very good action on this one, but there's also a micro switch in the mechanism here so that it cuts the power when this thing opens out. And there are several different types here. This one's actually only a two pin. Most of the others are, all the others are three pin. Uh, again, a micro switch in there to cut the power. Well, they're the charging connectors for these things, electric hot water bottles. So here's an old one, uh, which I've had for a while. There's the, uh, the pins of the connector in there, three pins here. Not entirely sure how useful an earth is. Um, this is a new one. This is, uh, this I got from Lidl actually. Again, it's a three pin one. It's got the UKCA mark on it. So let's take a look at this one. As I say, this one came from Lidl and I got it um, recently. And it's this, it's the Carmen rechargeable hot water bottle. It was 17.95, which actually is a good deal cheaper than the other three I've got, which were all around the 25 pound mark. So this is a Carmen brand. I believe Carmen um, did heated rollers years ago. It actually says here style and well-being since 1965. So this is just a brand for sale. If you look at Amazon, you'll see that there are lots of this product, same uh, image here. Um, and there's all different brand names up here. Um, this has a three year warranty, which is typical for products from Lidl. But that does concern me a little bit because these things have a bit of an issue. We'll just look at this briefly. Um, imported and distributed by RKW Limited, ST4, is that Stevenage? Uh, UK representative office is Powerforce Distribution Ireland Limited. And of course, it's made in China. Now, the problem I've identified with this thing, these things is that when you first get them, they're quite saggy. They're not overfilled, so you can kind of fold them like this. However, my older hot water bottles, which I've had for, well, at least a year, um, I'll show you the blue one again. They puff up. Um, this one's nowhere near as saggy. It's quite taut. Um, almost as though it's sort of got additional uh, liquid inside it. I don't think it's quite water because when these are very cold, the, it acts a bit like a gel. It doesn't slosh around so much. So now when I charge this, now of course you're not charging it in the sense of charging a battery, you're just simply heating up the liquid that's inside here. There's some sort of heating element uh, inside the bottle. You can feel it. It's kind of it's hard. I just wonder if I can get an imprint of it. Probably not on this one because as I say it's all puffed up. Um, when I connect this and it starts to get warm it puffs up like a scared cat and uh, it switches off and it switches off far too cold. So I've uh, connected the connector to this bottle. Um, that red light appears to be flashing but it's not in reality. It's obviously um, only taking half the sine wave but this is starting to warm up now and I'll give it a moment and then um, we'll see at what point this connector switches off simply because the bottle's puffed up and the connector has opened out and the micro switch has uh, switched off in fact there it is and this is well warm but if you slosh this around um, it soon becomes very tepid because it just hasn't had any time to heat the liquid inside. And uh, yeah, if I put my hand in the muff section, I think this is called a muff, isn't it? A sort of double-ended glove type section. Uh, this isn't warm at all. This is completely tepid. Uh, so if you look on Amazon at these things, like I say, they're about £25 on Amazon. A lot of the comments say worked for a while, worked possibly for the first year, but then stopped working. It doesn't warm up. And that's right, it doesn't warm up because it switches off far too quickly because this thing has puffed up far too much. Now you can get round that and I'll show you how. 
And the solution to this is that you just hold this down. And you have to put quite a bit of force on it because as this thing puffs up, it really fights against you because it's it's getting quite um, high pressure inside here. And yeah, you have to impact quite a bit of force on this connector to actually get the contents of this bottle uh, the least bit warm. Now it doesn't feel particularly good doing this because you are having to put quite a bit of force on this. And there is a concern that the bottle will explode. It doesn't, um, or it hasn't yet. Um, so this does work, but uh, yeah, you are overriding one of the safety features, which is the micro switch in this uh, connector. I do believe that there are also thermal cutouts inside the heating element in here, whatever that heating element is. Uh, not entirely sure how it works. So looking at the Carmen unit again, the one I got from Lidl, um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. It says charge for 10 to 15 minutes. The indicator light, indicator light will illuminate. The charger will automatically switch off after this time. The appliance reaches 50 degrees. The indicator light will go out and then it stays warm for between two and five hours. Um, it also says a dump, double temperature controller is incorporated. When temperature reaches approximately 60 to 70 degrees, it will automatically switch off. So I'm thinking some sort of um, thermo I don't know, mechanical, perhaps bimetallic thing inside. But it also has, the hot water bottle has a protection device uh, and the temperature rises higher than 85 degrees C, the protection device will start to work and automatically cut off the power. So you've got something that cuts off at 50, something that cuts off at 60 to 70, and another thing which cuts off at 85. Are there really three temperature controlled devices in this? And what about the external micro switch when it puffs up? and that switches off. Is that a fourth one? Hmm. So another couple of things about this while it's warming up. Um, these fabric ones, they do get a bit dirty because you can't stick this in a washing machine. I mean, I, you could get a scrubbing brush with a bit of detergent and give it a good scrub, but it's a lot of work. And the point is, you know, this is designed to warm your hands. So your hands are on this thing the whole time and any dirt and grime on your hands gets transferred to the fabric. And it starts looking like this kind of off color, slightly grayish. I hesitate to say brown, but <laughs> certainly not blue color. So I've changed the camera angle in order to get a view of just how puffed up this gets. So I'm just gonna press it down to re-enable the micro switch and then hold it with one finger. And you can hear it boiling and it's fighting me and see how taut it's got. It's really a balloon at this point. Yeah, that has puffed right up. Um, I don't know how close to bursting that is. So I'll just show you my collection of these electric hot water bottles. Um, this blue one, uh, because of this issue with the fabric getting dirty quite quickly, I went for this one. Now this one's got no, uh, what's this, flock. This is a fabric, I think, just glued onto the, the rubber. Um, this one is just plain rubber. Uh, this was the one with just two pins. Didn't bother with a, an earth on this one. Uh, then there's this Carmen one, which has already started to come apart, actually. Uh, this has started to pull out there, so I ought to take this back actually and get my uh, or get a replacement uh, unit. And then the fourth one is this. I've had to go to a wider lens uh, to get this in. This is a sort of horseshoe shaped one which you heat up and stick round your neck. And again, this one is one that hasn't yet puffed up. So actually, yeah, that's quite taut there, but it's still quite saggy, this one, so this one still works fine. Now, you may have seen um, Clive do a teardown of a very cheap Chinese electric hot water bottle, and the heating element wasn't an element. It was just two carbon rods, um, and then presumably the water in, in here has a little bit of, um, I don't know, salts in it maybe, so that you get a, a transfer of electricity through it. Now, if that's the way this one works, then you will get, oh, what's it called? Hydrolysis, is it? Where you separate the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And that would certainly explain why 
they get puffed up over time. But I would hope that this uh, type has actually a proper coiled wire heating element in it, in which case you shouldn't get that uh, generation of hydrogen and oxygen, but I just don't know. And, and certainly since these things do puff up, um, I'm just wondering whether they have rather crude heating elements in them. So I'm going to start a tear down. I'm not sure how far I'm going to get with this because <laughs> I don't want to make a huge mess on my desk uh, and I can't really go outside because it's snowing today. So we'll certainly take this screw out and have a look under this bit. I'll go back to the uh, more zoomed in lens. So I'll just take this as a single screw holding this on and then it's hooked over the end with a little hook there and there's some sort of inspection uh, port here with a little white dot in it. I'm not entirely sure what that is but I, I do intend to take some of these or perhaps more than some of these screws out and just see what happens, see if, perhaps if it starts leaking. Now these two I have removed and they don't seem to do much. They just appear to hold the polythene bag um, which you can see the edges of. There's sort of evidence of it but it doesn't leak so I don't quite know how this works. Uh, yeah they just hold the polythene bag up onto the connector and I'm not entirely sure what that inspection port actually is for or what it does. Right, the next thing is to undo these screws. Now the question is, if I start undoing these, will I get any leakage? Or maybe they just hold this uh, top plastic piece to the heating element piece underneath. Don't seem to have any leakage at the moment, so I'll keep removing these screws and uh, just see what the effect of that is. So this is coming out. Ah, okay, we've got some wires uh, running down into there and there is a thermal cutout switch there. We'll take a closer look at that. Right, that one is 92 degrees uh, Celsius. So now this isn't the Kalman one, so maybe uh, that one has a different thermal cutout, but that's just really in this aperture at the top here. One thing I have noticed is if I tip this over, you can see, uh, if I tip it that way, you can see the liquid rise up um, into there. And actually that changes color ever so slightly, doesn't it? Goes from a sort of creamy color to a gray color. So it's certainly an inspection port, uh, possibly for the liquid. But then the wires uh, disappear. The red wire is actually connected through the thermal switch onto that third pin there. Then you just have three wires disappearing down into the unit. Uh, red, blue and yellow. And beyond that, we can't see anything. So what do you think? Do you think this is um, a proper coiled wire heating element in a, in a um, metal container with, with an insulating um, substance in there or is it something crude like a couple of carbon um, tips that, that just put electricity through the water which is pretty horrible really. Yeah how do you think this works um, and if there's sufficient interest and uh, perhaps you know if this video makes a profit sufficient that I could uh, cut one of these things up then perhaps I'll take it apart further and um, investigate how the heating element works. But that's as far as I can go without totally destroying this. And of course, without the liquid coming out. And I don't really know what the liquid is. I imagine it's just water with, um, well, something in it that, that turns it into a gel when it gets cold, because they're quite, they're quite stiff when they're cold, these things. Um, but I think that's it uh, for this video. It was really just an introduction to the fact that I've got four of these electric hot water bottles and uh, they do seem to have multiple cutout systems, um, hopefully to make these things relatively safe. But as for the three year warranty on that Carmen one, yeah, it is a multi-part warranty. I think it's one year at the shop and two years you have to register with RKW importing and whatever they're called. Uh, and they'll give you the extra two years. Of course, 90% of people won't bother to do that. 
and so they probably these things fail after a year and people don't bother to uh, ask for a replacement unit but uh, yeah that's it for this video so cheerio